Our theme this month in February is joy. And my topic today is about the indescribable. What is it? What is it? How, what, 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 how did I define it? Because I've I got so many words and definitions coming at you now, I just had to see it. <laughs> the indescribable peace transcendent of circumstances. The indescribable peace transcendent of circumstances. You know, joy should not be confused with happy. The root word of happy is the English word hap, which is circumstance. When we are happy, we are pleased about the circumstances. And too often we make the mistake of not feeling and fully expressing our joy because we're not happy. You can be full of joy in spite of the fact that you're not happy. And I contend that the deepest joy you will ever know is the joy that you experience in the midst of not being happy. It's the joy that you experienced in the midst of your grief or your sorrow or your fear or your doubt or your worry or your anguish or whatever that is. When there is something that comes over you that lets you feel all right in your soul, that's when you will know a joy. Get the CD. Because I'm going to do something a little unusual. I'm going to give you a lot of definitions today. <laughs> so you can put them together. These spirit definitions, these are definitions that will be in um, a subsequent volume of the Letters from the Infinite series. And they are formulas explaining to us the spiritual qualities as activity of consciousness. The spiritual qualities are not something that we chase after. Joy is not something outside of yourself that you seek after. What we're looking for, we're looking with. And what the definitions do is they describe to us the places that we need to move into consciousness to experience ourselves as the fullness of the spiritual quality that we already are. We are the joy, we are the love, we are the power and the peace. It's who we are. We just don't know it because we're twisted in our thinking. We just don't know it because we have a lot of mud and crud on the lens of our third eye. We, 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 we just don't know it because there's something that we have to wash away, cleanse away, purify away so that we can see. We're all like diamonds in the rough. The diamonds that shine the brightest are the ones with the most cuts on them, the most facets on them. Let the cuts be for gladness. Every time you come back at a certain issue and turn it this way and see through it and turn it that way and see through it and turn it that way and overcome and over it. So, and we're like, well, didn't I get it that way? Yeah, but you got to cut it that way too. Well, I thought I did it this way. Yeah, but if you turn it over and slice it this other way and break through from this angle as well, you know what happens. Those pieces of glass that have the most cuts and facets on them, what happens when the light hits? Doom, the rainbow. The rainbow. If you want your lights to shine, if you want your bright lights to shine, you have to be willing to let the diamond that you are get more facets on it by your willingness to take something, the circumstances upside down, over, in, under, and break through and see through. So it's not temporal, like the reading said. It's a new view. It's a new perspective. So these spiritual definitions always describe something that already exists in the universe in the absolute that's not contingent upon us. And yet there's something that we very personally have to bring to the table to energetically meet it. 
So it describes the spiritual qualities as these activities that we are, a full potential that's waiting for us as part of the great I am, but there's some tweak in our awareness. There's something that we need to shift in our inner being in terms of how we show up so that we can experience it. I can't say that enough. Everything is already here. Nothing's missing. We don't experience it because of the way we're not showing up. It's not that it's not there. We're not bringing what we need to the table to see it. Like love is a decoder. Peace is a decoder. Like putting on your little Superman x-ray vision glasses or something, where boom, you can see straight through all of the steel and the lead and the, and the hardened hearts and the husks and, and the, the credit reports and the doctor's reports and all these other things that are camouflaging. Camouflaging everything that's there. This stuff is juicy. Get the CD. <laughs> it says, this was the definition of joy. It says, joy is where your transcendent awareness, mm, your transcendent awareness, not just awareness, but your transcendent awareness rests. When your transcendent awareness is resting, not trying to figure it out, not trying to analyze, not trying to get somewhere, not trying to make something happen, but when your transcendent awareness rests in something. It says, when it rests in my ineffable peace. And I had to look up ineffable because I really wasn't sure what that meant. It means indescribable. Indescribable. Joy is when your transcendent awareness rests in my indescribable peace. Like it says in scripture, there is the peace that passes human understanding. Where well, there's no reason for it. Because we usually think, well, give me a reason to be happy. Give me a reason to be joy-filled. Give me a reason to feel at peace. No. No. It's, it's when there's a transcendent awareness that you have. And it's resting in this indescribable peace. So the reason why I'm giving you all these definitions is so you can study. Transcribe it. Put it all together. Because what you'll see here is a formula, kind of like the affirmative prayer technique that we teach here called the spiritual mind treatment, which is the anatomy of a prayer. It's not the way to pray, but it explains the terrain and consciousness that any effective prayer goes through. And it's this same way here, where these definitions describe the terrain that your consciousness must go through in order for you to experience the joy. So it's kind of like a road map. It becomes a guide. It becomes a compass. So it describes transcendent. Catch each of these things, they're juicy, and then you just go like, in your own, put them together. I'll put them together. It said, Joy is where transcendent awareness rests in my ineffable, my indescribable peace. So, what does it mean for something to be transcendent? It describes transcendent as the place where your release rises to my non attached perspective. Transcendent is the place where your release rises to my non-attached perspective. That kind of awareness. Get the CD. <laughs> so y'all need to be making some extra ones. If you got to leave, go do that. 
awareness. Awareness. It says awareness is that place where your understanding is illumined by my ever-present existence. Awareness, that place where your understanding is illumined by my ever-present existence. When we're in the place of awareness, it's not about anything in particular. We're just aware. It reminds me of um, a story that Deepak Chopra tells in his quantum healing lecture that he gave at the Religious Science Conference of Selimar back in 1991. I love that CD, and it's a part of our curriculum for students to read it. And he describes a situation where this man falls off of a roof. He has a heart attack, and he falls off of a roof. And for a split second, he's actually dead. But he falls in such a level where his heart gets, like the, the, the defibrillation process thing happens again. So he has this out-of-body experience. So when Deepak is talking to him, he says, what did you experience? And the guy said, awareness. And he says, well, can you be a little more specific? You know, <laughs> what is it you are aware of? And the guy just said, I was aware that I was aware. That's, that's what I mean by conscious awareness sometimes, that the spirit letters say. To move into a place of conscious awareness where you become aware that you are aware. Transcendent, that place where your release rises to my non-attached perspective and awareness is where your understanding is illumined by my ever-present existence. Mm. Mm. And it goes on to explain rest. Hmm. <laughs> what we bring to the table is a capacity to rejuvenate. That's our part, to bring to the table a capacity to rejuvenate. How many times do we doubt that we actually have that? Mm -hmm. that, that we actually doubt that we can. So even when we're in non-activity, we're not resting. Because we haven't brought an intent. We haven't brought with us the sense of a capacity to rejuvenate. We're, we're waiting for something external to happen to us, to make us rest, to allow us to rest instead of realizing that part of the rest is going to come from our bringing our capacity to rejuvenate to it. Rest is that place where your capacity to rejuvenate is stimulated by my quiet repose. Isn't that interesting? Stimulated by it. You have the capacity. It's not being given to you, it's being stimulated by God's quiet repose, that place of stillness. But we have to bring the intent. We have to bring the capacity with us. And last but not least, mm, mm, mm. peace. It says, peace is that place where your surrender seeks my omnipresent oneness. Peace is that place where your surrender seeks my omnipresent oneness. When you're at peace, there's no struggle. When you're at peace, there's no battle. There's no struggle. There's no duality. There's no opposition. There's no wolf. There's no door. There's no victim. There's no perpetrator. When you're at the place of peace, you're in that place of experiencing the oneness. Mm, mm, mm. So I started to string it all together for myself. And you can put it together however you want to put it together. And I invite you to just close your eyes. Don't even try to catch the words. Every concept has a vibration. 
just be with the vibration. Joy. You put it all together. This is joy. These are the, this is the terrain that we're going through to unleash this joy within us. There's this place where you're released, rising to my non-attached perspective, and your understanding illumined by my ever-present existence is residing in your rejuvenating capacity, stimulated by my quiet repose. In this place, your surrender seeks my omnipresent oneness in this place. Hmm. We have to give ourselves permission to feel joy. I'm going to say that again. We have to give ourselves permission to feel joy. This is the problem when we externalize spiritual qualities, when we objectify them and make them something outside of ourselves that we have to chase after. When we do that, we don't give ourselves permission to experience the quality until we have obtained that object, whatever it is. So I can't experience the love until I have this relationship. I can't experience the prosperity until I have this job. I can't experience the security until I have this home. I can't experience the peace until this relationship reconciles. I can't do this until this and then, 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 then. So, the only thing that changes when we get that whatever it is that we think we have to have, the only thing that shifts is how we see ourselves. The only thing that shifts is perspective. The facts don't change. It's the same world that you had before. Everything's the same. But we're waiting for something to happen to give us permission to feel loving, permission to feel joy, permission to feel prosperous, as though I don't have the right to without that thing. How dare I without that? So then we have all these external measures. But no, it's the other way around. What you're looking for, you're looking with. What you're looking for, you're looking with. We already have it. We already are it. And that's where the joy comes from. The joy comes from in knowing that there's nothing else that has to happen. The joy comes in knowing that my purpose, my value, my worth, my fulfillment is not conditioned upon people, places, and things. As long as we make it contingent upon people, places, and things, we are enslaved to it. We are indebted to it because the consciousness that obtains sustains. So if in my mind, my good is the result of some person, place, or thing, then I'm going to forever be desperate to try to hold on to keep that person, place, or thing. But it's us. It's us. It's who we are. And when we can allow ourselves to realize that no matter what is going on, the sun still shines, the birds still sing, babies are born, Spring follows the winter, as we were just singing about. It's, it says in Scripture, weeping may 
endure for the night. But there's always the morning. But joy cometh in the morning. So just hang in there. <laughs> just hang in there. It can feel like the night in the middle of the day. It, it, n night's not a spot on the clock. <laughs> night is a state of awareness. But if you just remember that right where you are, it's all right there. The joy is right there. I had a chance to witness it a couple of times just recently. We had a memorial service on Friday for Beverly Lundell, and we had one the day before here for Mary Simone. And even in the midst of the sorrow and the tears, you know, the two-year-old's running around. And as people engaging the small children, even though they were in grief, at that moment when they were engaging the energy of the children, they were smiling. And Beverly especially, wild woman that she is, <laughs> said no black. Nobody could wear black <laughs> to her memorial service. <laughs> and she wanted it upbeat. And that was one of the most joyous things I'd ever witnessed, where the choir sang, um, we let it be. The Byers Beckwith, we let it be song. And the whole place was dancing. To see her husband and her children and whatnot, dancing. Dancing at the memorial. Finding the joy in the living. It's possible because they gave themselves permission. Let us pray. In this moment right now, we give thanks. We give thanks for blessings large and small. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. So much going on. And we say thank you, Mother, Father, God, for all needs met. There's no promise that our expectations would be met, but our needs. And in this moment right now, I pray that even our expectations yield and more. So that we will our will to be the will of God. No more struggle, no more strife. Truly, with our faith, we see the light. In this moment right now, we surrender all. The stories, the victim, villain, hero, triangle. There's no wolf, and there's no door. There's no wall for our backs to be up against. There's no cliff for us to be falling off of. In this moment, we move into that place of the transcendent awareness. And we deliberately and consciously remember, remember, we put it back together again. We remember all of the joy. We remember all of the love. We remember all of the triumph. 
We don't allow the miracles in our life to be these lucky moments. We consider them, we string them all together so that we see the picture of the tapestry of our life. Of how time and time and time and time again we have been guided and directed and provided for. In this moment right now, we're praying this transcendent prayer for all of the prayer requests that have come in. That even in the midst of things working out, because truly all things are working together for good, that even in the midst, we don't have to wait until there's some outer manifestation we experience the joy now. Like a farmer who has just tilled the soil and, and, and planted. And you look out and, and there's nothing there. There's nothing sprouted. It just looks like ground. Oh, but the farmer is rejoicing in joy. As they see it done. <laughs> like the kids told us last week, I watered it, I pulled the weeds, carrot come from carrot seed. That's what we know in this moment. So I am knowing that the only thing that is comes in is all needs met. Health in the body temple. Healing of relationships. Free from the bondage of lack and limitation. Reconciliation is the order of the day. Trust and truth and wholeness. It comes through as prosperity and abundance. Fiscal and financial stability. Provision. Grace and ease guidance and direction clarity of purpose and vision strength courage balance integration and wholeness sustainability in our lives and this planet then all of our social political economic systems as well as in our own lives this is the prayer that we pray in the inner so in the outer in the macro so in the micro it's all God thank you thank you and it is with this transcendent awareness that I release this word knowing that it cannot return void, but it is already fulfilled. It is done. And so it is. Amen. And amen.